We begin the day in South Africa where the rule of law for everyone is under attack. Soldiers are now patrolling the streets in many cities after a day that saw the worst violence in the country in years. Looters set fire to shopping centers and warehouses. Crowds clashed with outnumbered police. More than 40 people have died. Many say the violence is the result of high unemployment made worse by the country's anemic vaccination drives. There is also the feeling that 27 years after apartheid, many promises made by corrupt politicians have not been kept. South Africa's political leaders certainly shoulder a lot of the blame, including former President Jacob Zuma, but he does not see it that way. Zuma is behind bars tonight. Two weeks ago, the country's highest court sentenced him to 15 months in prison for contempt of court after he refused to appear before a panel investigating corruption allegations against him. Zuma says this is all a political witch hunt, equating the decisions of the high court with the system of justice under apartheid. Today, his foundation issued a threat. If Zuma is not released from prison, there will be no peace in South Africa. Is this what it looks like and what it sounds like? Is former South African President Jacob Zuma holding his own country hostage? We begin tonight with this report. This warehouse in Durban was ransacked by hundreds of people. The shelves emptied, the goods carried out in bulk. It is only one of dozens of malls, supermarkets and small shops that were targeted by looters. Like this party supplies shop in Soweto. It's over. It's over. I've got overheads. I've got, I owe banks money. How am I going to pay this month? With what? In some instances, armed local residents went after the looters themselves. The government sent soldiers to the most affected areas as police struggled to control the unrest. The current situation on the ground is under strong surveillance and we, we will ensure that it does not deteriorate any further. We cannot allow anyone to make a mockery of our democratic state. The protest started last week after former South African President Jacob Zuma began serving a 15-month jail term. He was sentenced for contempt of court after refusing to appear at a corruption inquiry. The outrage of Zuma's supporters was compounded by anger over persisting inequality and poverty in the country. And for more now, I want to cross over to our correspondent, Christine Munwa. She is in Cape Town covering this story for us. Good evening to you. Christine, Jacob Zuma's foundation today said there would be no peace in South Africa until Zuma is released from prison. Is South Africa, is it being held hostage tonight by its former president? Well, Brent, uh, it would be very difficult to argue that we are not here because of the former president's incarceration. Um, when Mr. Zuma was facing imprisonment, his supporters warned that there would be unrest in the country. In fact, when they initially started mobilizing, there was a hashtag doing the rounds on social media platforms, hashtag shut down South Africa, free Jacob Zuma. Uh, and of course, we find ourselves where we are today. Brent, beyond the looting that we have been seeing happening in these two key provinces is the destruction. We're talking about the burning down of certain properties, buildings, assets, it appears that there are people hell-bent uh, on making uh, a destructive mark on this country, doing significant damage uh, to, to certain assets in this country. And we're certainly seeing uh, how it is affecting uh, the delivery of, of products, key nerve centers uh, that are responsible for the transportation of goods across the country have actually been halted, including certain sites where vaccine rollout has been suspended. Uh, people aren't able to get their vaccines because of the extent of the damage that is being done in this country. And, you know, we hear that this was all sparked by the jailing of former South African leader Jacob Zuma. <clears throat> Zuma, though, he turned himself into police almost one week ago, and the violent reactions which his supporters promised, it feels like they came somewhat delayed. I mean, what does that tell us? 
Well, Brent, actually, this actually started a few hours after the president, uh, the former president, was uh, arrested. Um, we saw small groups of people. These were isolated incidents. Uh, you would have the incident of a car burning here, a building set alight there, a small number of people gathered in the name of Free Jacob Zuma. But by the time we went to the weekend, this was a full-scale arson attacks, looting the kinds of pictures that we're now looking at um, today. So certainly we heard it from the security cluster, the, the Minister of State Security coming out and saying that they are now investigating that former security officials that are believed to be linked to the former president might be involved in this. There is a level of sophistication that has taken course here, and that is what officials here are investigating. And, and I'm wondering, th this unrest that is attached to his incarceration, um, is that likely then to impact his court case? Because he is appealing, you know, the sentence of 15 months for contempt of court. Well, many people here, uh, especially those in, in the legal fraternity, would argue that that has absolutely no bearing uh, on the on the Mr. Zuma's appeal case at the Constitutional Court. Uh, on Monday, uh, his lawyers spent uh, the better part of the day essentially making their case as to why that court uh, should reconsider its sentencing, its, its judgment and conviction of the former president. Everybody who was watching that case from uh, the legal expert side does not feel that uh, Mr. Zuma's lawyers made a convincing enough case, uh, that the hurdles that they needed to get over to, to get the court to, to make that decision, they don't appear to have done that. But it doesn't appear that the developments in the country today will have any bearing uh, on that particular case, Brent. There are soldiers on some streets tonight in South Africa. Yeah. The military, was the military deployed to do a job that the local police could not do or would not do? That is essentially it, and that has caused outrage. Uh, this deployment uh, of the military although it is confined to these two uh, provinces, has really shown uh, what is a, a failure by law enforcement. Uh, people were warned in this country. It was clear to people that there would be some kind of a reaction uh, if the former president was incarcerated. So that was to be expected. The fact that for days on end, you had people causing the damage that people have done, the extent of the looting, destruction, and there was no law enforcement visible, in, in some cases, for hours on end, and not a single police officer in sight. And now you have a military presence, which itself is proving ineffective. It is a limited deployment, and it has done nothing uh, to quell the outbreaking and the unrest in this country. We are still seeing more looting taking place, even as I am speaking, at a number of locations in the two affected provinces, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. So certainly, South Africans asking the questions tonight that there has been a failure when it comes to this country's leadership, the police minister, state security officials, as well as the president, very much in the firing line and under attack by the South African public tonight, Brent. Yeah, a disturbing situation, and we know that you will stay on top of events for us. Christine Woodward in Cape Town tonight. Christine, as always, thank you.